Hello YouTube, hope you had a great week. On this Monday's live stream, uh, there was a, a segment where I was asked about my experience with code sharing uh, between repos and that set me off on a little talk about like, what I think about monorepos and how I think they are really great for sharing code between projects if you can uh, get away with them. Before we get on to that clip, I would like to thank today's sponsor, which is Brilliant. Brilliant is this great service for learning advanced computer science concepts and mathy things like that because I have these nice interactive challenges so it's not just uh, like you're doing right now staring at a video trying to learn things. Brilliant is really really great in, in the interactivity space. And uh, I'm currently uh, preparing a machine learning workshop for Brazil JS. So I'm brushing up a little bit on my computer science concepts and I'm really looking forward to using Brilliant for that. If you're interested in stuff like that, you should check out brilliant.org slash FFF. Uh, that link tells them that you came from here and it also gives you 20% off if you get the annual subscription. Thank you, Brilliant. Now onto the clip from this Monday's Twitch livestream. Jerkle says, currently using GCP functions with work. Very interesting. Yeah, I, I actually like, I um, try to use um, cloud functions on GCP for a personal project or like <laughs> personal uh, fun fun function backend but I eventually just gave up in disgust um, because I think they are so badly made um, the documentation is just atrocious and like they have like two node versions and the it's only the old version that supports npm private repos uh, like these npm private things and you must have that in order <laughs> for it to share things like it's like cloud functions uh, like that are autonomous projects without shared npm repository it's just like that just doesn't make sense um, but if you use the new node engine like not the 8 one that does not work and that doesn't say that anywhere like there's no error message or a useful error message or anything so it wasn't like I'd spend like three hours at least trying to debug that uh, and since nobody uses GCP like that just didn't work it was just like what the <clears throat> Dacom says not sure if my problem is specifically due to serverless but something I struggle with the sharing code between repos uh, within a project yeah uh, to be honest um, um, at Spotify, we um, uh, when I joined, uh, the company was very, very microservices oriented. The backend was very like had hundreds of different microservices all in their separate repos, uh, managed by like divided over teams and stuff. Um, and uh, the front end was also uh, inspired by that. You had like micro front ends and everything was in its own repo Spotify did like had a shared NPM uh, before anybody had it um, and oh, yeah I was a, like I uh, I was a big believer in that whole having like a tons of small repos um, but after a while uh, I started seeing like the, the back uh, the downsides of that because it's a lot of a lot of contract area that you get when you are um, when you're spreading your code out like that. So uh, when when we moved to like a single repo for the desktop client and like move to one build system and sharing all of that infrastructure and also being able to make changes in three different modules and the main code using the modules at the same time in one pull request. Uh, that just was so awesome. Uh, it improved productivity so much and um, like I am nowadays very skeptical before pushing things out in a separate repo because I I have like understood that the in, I have learned that the cost of pushing things out into separate repositories and separate modules completely autonomous um, the cost of that is pretty high and you need to be aware of that. 
Uh, Ronin says, why monorepo? Um, the reason why you want a monorepo is uh, basically to make code changes across modules uh, faster and easier uh, and with less errors. Um, because like m being able to do them in one pull request, uh, when having that overview and having all the teams that are involved in all the modules being able to discuss in one place is extremely useful. And also um, able to deploy that at, at the same time is very useful. Otherwise you have to manage like different versionings of different NPM modules and other teams might depend on the majors and the minors, I like it, it becomes messy. Um, and the uh, second reason is for you to be able to share uh, build systems. Uh, so at Spotify, everybody, while we had things in separate, um, separate, uh, everybody had their own separate uh, repositories and their own build pipelines, was it, it was cool in the beginning because it allowed you to like do your own thing and like move uh, move fast and just decide what what tech you used but uh, there's also a huge benefit to having like a single team working on getting the build pipeline really really solid and when you can share that and have like really uh, piggyback on each other's um, build pipeline and if that build pipeline is really good then um, then that's very very beneficial too Andrew Glamiv, what about sharing the modules through a private NPM registry? Yeah, that's that's what we did, um, and uh, that's cool. Um, it's uh, it's useful, but uh, the problem, like it, uh, sharing code over uh, over NPM, is much more friction than sharing them within one repository uh, because you have the versioning thing going. Like in if you have a monorepo, everything is just one big um, one big thing and uh, um, it's you know, sorry one big version and if you have NPM uh, modules everything can have like different versions and you have to manage that complexity you have to like there's a lot of commits and versioning and publishing going on to uh, get your code shared and you also like there's very it's, it's much harder to see the dependencies on, on each thing. Like in um, uh, if you have everything in one repo, it's it's a lot easier to search for search for things and see what, what dependencies um, uh, are. What, what what code is dependent on each dependency. Like we found that whenever there was a like w before the monorepo, uh, library owners tended to be a little bit uncaring, if I'm honest. Uh, they tended to like because they it was hard so hard for them to figure out what repositories depended on the versions and the fact that uh, it was version they could just go like eh we'll just update the library and if somebody like it's versioned and people know it's version then you can just check the update thing and uh, that made them do a lot of updates it wasn't necessarily all that good for all the users of the libraries. Um, so when we moved to a monorepo, like the, sh the owner sh sense of ownership became shared uh, across the organization and that uh, like it, it just became a much more healthy dialogue between developers. Um, Andrew Lamy, isn't, isn't it could easily introduce breaking changes with monorepo without version management? Uh, what? What? Um, do you, th are you saying that it's easy? To, int to introduce breaking changes with mono no it's a lot harder to introduce breaking changes with a mono repo because you uh, because you s like when you need to introduce a breaking change uh, it's a lot easier to manage with a mono repo because you can make one pull request that has an overview of all the uh, the entire system uh, it also creates a good inertia because we found that uh, when when it was versioned, um, people became kind of crazy when it came to introducing uh, breaking changes because they weren't the ones 
dealing with the breaking change, if you know what I mean. They could just like, in their world, it was just like, they had the library and then they just like, bloop, 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 updated the, the library. And then they uh, updated the code that was dependent on, on the library. And, um, uh, and then it was, uh, and then they just updated the major. And then people that were dependent on the library just were like, oh, well, just update to the major whenever we can, uh, which sounds good in theory, but in reality, it just meant that people were like, just different people were on the uh, on different versions, and it was just like uh, a mess. Thank you so much for watching. Check out our sponsor, Brilliant, if you're interested in learning about machine learning and computer science and, and stuff like that with nice interactive challenges. You can check them out at brilliant.org slash FFF and that link gives you 20% off the annual subscription. Thank you, Brilliant. This clip was from the live show. If you want to catch us live, what you're doing interactive programming, asking any questions that you like, catch us on twitch.tv slash fun fun function on Mondays. If you Click that link. This, this, this is also what morning is in your time zone. If you want to check out more what Fun for Function is about, you can check out this playlist, where you can also subscribe here. I am MPJ. Until next week, stay curious.